In today's lesson, we're going to have a look at sketching trigonometric functions. So just have a quick read of the learning goal and we're just going to get going into it. We've had an initial look at the unit the circle and determining when trigonometric functions, that is sine, cos, and tan, are positive or negative. We're going to have a look into sketching trigonometric functions. Firstly, it is useful to visualize the basics of the unit circle. That is x being equal to cos of theta and y being equal to sine of theta. And we know that the radius of the circle is one. Now this gives us four known coordinates at the endpoints of the circle. If we consider the path of the radius around the circle and pay attention to the value of it, sine of theta, what we can see is that the value starts at zero and then it goes up to one and then goes back down to zero in a circular manner over the course of pi radians. We then notice that the value of the sine of theta becomes negative between pi and two pi radians, again in this circular manner, giving us the sketch of y equals sine of x. We can consider the same concept for cos of theta. So in other words, pay attention to the value of the x-axis as the radius rotates around the unit circle. With no rotations, we can see that the value is one. And then as we rotate 90 degrees around the unit circle, the value drops to zero. We then move from 90 degrees to 270 degrees, and we can see that the value of cos of theta is negatively. And evidently, the corresponding value on the x-axis is negative. When we're in the final stretch of the loop, the value for cos then becomes positive and wraps back up to one again in this circular manner. Hopefully by doing this, we can see that as sine and cos are defined and as it's been displayed, trigonometric functions have great symmetry. As for, as for tan of x, we're gonna have a look at that graph uh, in class. So I've just got a screenshot here displaying one full cycle of a sine and cos of x. I just wanna indicate a few things. Thing number one, we've got a period of two pi. A period is just one full cycle. So we can see that we started here for cos and we ended here and that took two pi. Again, we can see it with sine, we started here, we ended here, that took two pi. From the start point to do that for one full loop of the circle, we call it the period, okay? So that takes two pi a rotate. The second thing I want to point out here is that we've got an amplitude of one. Now the amplitude is how far up and down the graph will go. And so we can see here that it's kind of stuck, I'll do this in a blue, it's kind of stuck between the bounds of one and negative one. Okay, now as we increase the amplitude, this wave will go higher up and lower down. The third thing to point out is that we've got an equilibrium equation of y equals zero. Okay, that is, this equation here, y equals zero. If you can imagine if this wave was a guitar string and you just ramp the guitar string and you waited for it to just settle back down. The fourth thing I wanna point out here is that we have got incremental points and there's four of them. There's the first one here, the second one here, the third one here, and the fourth one here, if we were considering cos of theta. We can consider sine of theta. We've got our first point here, second point here, third point here, and fourth point here. So there's always going to be four incremental points in a, in a full loop of the trigonometric functions. And now the fifth point I want to indicate here is how we looked at the unit circle and we had our cast labels. Okay, that is, we can consider A is in the first quadrant and that is when all of the all of sine, cos and tan are positive. And we can see this here. Now I'm just gonna section these off in their quadrants. Okay, that is because we go from zero to pi on two, to pi, to three pi on two, back to two pi, All right? So they each have their own separate quadrant. And we can see here that this is the A quadrant because sine and cos are both positive in that quadrant and tan would also be because tan is just the ratio of sine and cos. We move on here 
only sign is positive. We're gonna use a sign is that thread graph, and sine is the only one that's positive. Cos is negative, and we know tan is equal to the ratio of them. So if you've got a negative divided by a positive, you're gonna get a negative. And then here, we move on to the t quadrant. You can see sine and cos are both negative. Negative divided by a negative will give you a positive. So that's how we get tan, which is the ratio between the two negatives, give you the positive. And we end up C there, which is our final quadrant where only cos is positive and sine is negative. So that's just illustrating with the graphs how the unit circle ties in with this once again. Here we've got the general form of the trigonometric equation. Okay, so here A is called the amplitude, or the amp for short. B considers the period or how quickly a trig function will do a cycle. Now, just to note here, I've said trig, that can be sine, cos, or tan. Now, I've just put trig to uh, generalize it a little bit. We've got minus C and plus D. Now, like we've seen with every other function, this is just a vertical and horizontal shift. So this guy here, this is... So we're gonna have a quick jump into Desmos and play around with some of these parameters. Okay, so we've got Desmos fired up here and just so we're happy, uh, we've got y equals sine of one outside of x minus zero plus zero. So all I'm saying there is I've got no value for C and no value for D and the amplitude and the period haven't been changed at all. Hence, we're given a sine graph. We've just seen that one before. Now, if we want to transform this guy a little bit here, uh, we can change the amplitude, right? So that's I guess the sensitivity of this guitar string. If we make it a large number, we can see that it just bounces up and down towards two. It doesn't change the period, how quickly it takes to do one cycle. It just changes how much we're bouncing up and down. Uh, we can make it negative, and actually all that's gonna do is reflect. Okay, I'm gonna keep it at two. Oh, actually, no, I'm just gonna keep it one. Okay. We can play around with the period. Now the period is how quickly this thing will do a cycle. And so here we can see it takes two pi to do one full cycle. If we make this period two, all of a sudden, we are now doing a full period in pi radians. So the period happened twice as quick, all right? So we can see two full loops in two pi. And then a bigger number, we can make it do three loops, going full loop once, full loop twice, full loop three times, all right? I'm just gonna put it back to one so we can see how this thing transforms. Now, if I wanted to shift this graph, and so I've just got this one down here, all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, I wanna shift it over pi and three radians, and I wanna shift the graph up one. So now this is what it's gonna look like. What we've done is, and we can analyze these max points here. Okay, we've taken pi on two, and we've shifted that max point over to five pi on six. Pi on two is 90 degrees. Five pi on six is 150 degrees. So we've shifted from 90 degrees to 150 degrees. And that's because we shifted this guy over, this one here, by 60 degrees. So we went from 90 to 150. And we also shifted the thing up by one. You can do the same thing with the minimum point, right? This guy here, three pi on two, uh, that got shifted along and up. So it got shifted from negative one up to a zero. And we've gone from three pi on two, that's 270 degrees. We shifted it 60 degrees. And we ended up at 11 pi on six, which is 330 degrees. So just shuffled it along and shuffled it up. So if you've got an example, sketch y equals a two sine two x for one complete cycle. There's a few things I've got to check when I am sketching a trigonometric function. The first thing is I'm gonna make sure it's in its general form. Okay, and I'm good to go. Um, the second thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look at the transformations of A and B. So you can see here, I've got A equal to two. What this implies is that the amplitude is equal to two and it's got no reflection. It's got no reflection. And so I might kind of assist myself here and I know the sine starts down here. It's gonna go like bouncing up and down a little bit, up to two and down to minus two. That's what sort of implies, right, with no reflection. 
I also know that when B is equal to 2. Now, this changes the period. And the period typically is equal to 2 pi. 2 pi. However, when we've got the transformation of the period here, which we do, we need to divide it by B. Okay? And so in this case here, we would say the period is equal to 2 pi divided by 2, which is equal to pi. Now, I'm going to write a little sentence for what this implies. So it takes pi radians to complete a full cycle, not 2 pi. But of this, so I've looked at the form, I've looked at the transformations of A and B. I don't have any um, vertical or horizontal shifting, which is very nice. To consider my scaling of my axis, okay, I'm going to call these my, in my incremental or my periodic points. Okay, now these incremental points are going to occur, the period is pi, so that means a full cycle occurs at pi, but I need four of these incremental points. So I need to divide this by four, meaning I've got incremental points of pi on four. And I'm going to sketch it. So then from this point, I'm going to say, right, let's sketch y equals two sine of two x. I'm ready. I've done the analysis. Let's have a look. I'll do this in a green. So we're going to have a crack at sketching this guy here, and we can see that our, our graph paper goes from 0 to 2 pi. One complete cycle occurs in pi radians, right? So now I might make a note, pi is 4 pi on 4, and pi on 2 is 2 pi on 4. And my incremental points need to be in blocks of pi on 4, so that means here is going to be pi on 4, here's going to be 3 pi on 4. Okay, and I might actually even extend this. I know that sine, sine, the function, starts down here. And I'm going to have incremental points. It goes up to 1, it goes back down to 0, it goes back down to minus 1, or in this case minus 2 because of the amplitude, and then it goes back up to 0. That's one full cycle. So it goes up, goes back down, comes back around for one full cycle. Now, what I need to do is, like I do with every other sketching question, I write what I've done here, and I'm going to say these are the points, pi and 4. Now, what I actually could do is I could just keep extending this way because I know that. It's, it's circular, so it's just going to, as I rotate around the uh, unit circle, it's just going to keep continuing. So that's the question at this point here. We're done. We're done. All right. However, we can keep rotating this. We could say, yep, yeah, there's another point, there's another point, there's another point, there's another point, and we could sketch another cycle. And this would just keep going on and on. 